There is the case where he descends the I. There is the case where he descends the form. There is the case where he descends the feta that arises. There is the case where he descends arising, arising of unarisen feta. There is the case where he descends abandoning of the arisen feta. There is the case where he discerns that no further data is arising. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So this phrase, as we all know, is from the four foundations of mindfulness, which is the Bible handbook of the mindful practitioners. When we practice mindfulness, it is customary for us to listen to a talk and to discuss about it. We are doing that not, not just because we want it. It is the recommendations of, recommendation of the Blessed One. He has recommended five things that we should do if we practice. The five things are we should support the practice with with uh, morality we should support the practice with listening we should support the practice with discussion we should support the practice with concentration and which we should support the practice with insight morality is the way we live right and we just refresh that at the beginning of the program with the presence, right? And uh, discussion supportive factor and the listening supportive factor is what we are going to do now. And uh, concentration and insight were the one that we did in the last one and a half hours or so. We tried to bring our attention um, to um, a settled uh, position, settled status, um, and using that, see more details of ourselves, right? So we have done that to the best of our ability in the last one and a half hours or so, and in our daily practice. So why we do this is, is because uh, with this uh, listening and discussion supportive factor, we have some benefits. Number one is you get new knowledge. Right. When we listen, the Blessed One has said, you will never get this message unless you listen to them. Right. So therefore, it's imperative. So you get some new knowledge when you listen to them. Right. And the other thing is, when you listen to the and discuss um, the practice, you can confirm yourself what is happening. Because the Blessed One has said certain things, and you practice, and you listen and discuss, you can understand that what is happening to you it is what he has told. So you get a confirmation as well. And also it provides an opportunity for you to clear your doubts. I'm doing this way. Is it correct? Is this is happening to me. Is that the right way? And there are 101 questions that arises when you practice. So this is an opportunity. Uh, listening and discussion, uh, you can clear those doubts. And uh, also, it uh, straighten your view, right? Because we have different backgrounds, we have different uh, upbringings. So because of that, we have our way of looking at the world and our way of looking at things, our way, way of looking at spirituality may be different, right? So those views will have to be straight. So by listening and discussion, again, that can be, um, or that may happen. And uh, the last one, the last reason why we have this discussion is, uh, discussion and listening is a uh, bit dangerous. That is what the entire Buddhist world is stuck in, which is the intellectual entertainment that you get. When you listen to a Dhamma talk, and discuss, 
they keep listening and keep discuss discussing for hours and hours hours and hours never practice they just have that entertainment like michael jackson song and they don't do anything and the entire buddhist world 99.9% they listen to so many things and there are universities and there are degrees there are professors very few people in those places are practicing so therefore it is a bit dangerous but why they listen is because it is the highest knowledge that the university is having so when you hear that you get some get some entertainment right it arises um, it it arouses your uh, spirituality within you right so these are the reason why we have this uh, listening and discussion so once in a while i remind these things mm, so i just thought of uh, reminding that today again otherwise you may forget it <laughs> right why we do this and uh, coming back to the topic which is um, what i just mentioned i just spoke only about what happens to the i and this is happening not only to i it happens uh, even to the ear and nose tongue body and the mind as well right and we have discussed in the last 3 weeks um the significance of those things and the blessed one has said these faculties these sense bases and the corresponding external object is the universe for each and every living being whatever that you can sense is your world right so they are for the blessed one says that is the all right and we are so much so much hooked on to it for one reason blessed one says that is because of the gratification we get right we are so much attached to these sense bases because we have we have some satisfaction from right and then the blessed one says i am not saying that there is no gratification there is but he says every gain is having a pain and the pain that this has is you are always at a loss right uh, always we try in our living at least to match the cost to the benefit but in the case of senses are concerned at a loss you have very small gratification but it creates a huge danger the danger that it creates is every time you are born every time that is born with your eye born with your tongue born with your nose born with your ear dies when i am talking each and every word that you hear dies then and there we don't notice and it decays right and um, uh, all our faculties deteriorate over time it's not a secret for anyone any one of us here right and um, and uh, those uh, deterioration the, those decay have become industries in the world spec savers and that hearing this hearing <laughs> right so they are trying to stop all that anyway Mm, we are not going there um so simply what i want to say is uh, the gratification is not free of charge it has a huge cost and therefore blessed one says if you are expecting an eye you are expecting any of these sense faculties you are expecting that danger you are expecting that suffering you are asking for trouble right but he doesn't say that straight away so god is saying it now um therefore he says with uh, this gratification we are entangled in so much of mess and therefore he says we are entangled in an outflow and uh, we discussed uh, in this entanglement the um, the power the i is having and the power the intellect faculty is having right although 
the uh, faculties that has a form such as eye, ear, etc., are basically just uh, connectors only. The real entanglement is done by our mind, by our intellect faculty, right? And uh, therefore, uh, Blessed One says, uh, mind precedes everything. Everything are mind made. Therefore, he reaches the mind very quietly by bringing our attention to the body and disturbing the habit, the obsession, the mind is having. So, um, therefore, to teach this significant, most important part in our existence, Blessed One is taking time. He doesn't say, stop your eyes straight away. He simply says, you are there and you are breathing. Just observe that. And by doing that, what he simply does is, just keep the eye aside. Keep the ear aside. Keep the nose, nose aside. Keep the tongue controlled or shut. Right? And the mind is given a different job. So it has got to come to a different realm now. Right? So gradually, it's until he goes through the body, until he goes through the pain that creates in the body, until he goes through the mental agony and the mental satisfaction also that you get uh, in the process, he goes through all that. And then finally, when the pencil is sharp, he says, now you can start writing. Then he says, this is what is happening in your Existence. I is there, for me is there, and you have some fetter on it, and then it arises, pass away, it arises, pass away. Right? And that is the topic today. Now, all this time, uh, I was mainly concentrating on to tell uh, what these sense faculties are, and then uh, how they work, and the significance of. Uh, the intellect, faculty, etc. But that is not what this particular section is talking about. Buddha does not want to tell us about the eye. I mean, not directly what eye is doing or intellect is doing. He wants to bring our attention to the process. That is, that is what you call um, Dhammanupassana or observing the nature or observing the phenomena. This particular section is observing the phenomena. So his, he wants to bring our attention to that phenomena that takes place. So this is the phenomena. He says, he discerns the eye, which means uh, that particular practitioner because his um, practice is so, so sharp, his sensitivity is so high Right? He is mindful of each and every physical and mental process that takes place. So he's aware that now my eye is active. Now energy is flowing through my eye. Wave is taking place in my eye. Right? Then he can also discern. Now it is connecting so and so form. Right? And also, not only that, he sees, once that happened, now I'm completely attached to this. Now mind, my mind is now with the eye. I'm not listening. I'm not a listener. I'm not a person who is tasting anything. I'm not smelling anything. I don't have any tactile sensation. I don't think anything. I'm completely looking at it now. Right? Then he is not just looking at it. Because you are so mindful, now you start seeing the process, right? You see, when you see something, um, not just something, you exactly can pinpoint where you look at. If a boy sees a girl, a girl, girl sees a boy, and if they are practicing, and they don't just see the figure, their attention, now mind is taking the attention to, 
certain specific places and you start seeing that. And when that happens, you start trembling. Oh, am I such a bad person? Buddha is showing how bad we are. That is the wisdom. Knowing our own defilement is the wisdom. Now what we have done is, before that, we sugarcoat, wear white clothes and saffron robe and maroon robe, walk very slowly, but inside is disgusting. But if you see yourself that this is there, that is the purification. You know how bad you are. So you know when you walk on the path, you have got to be careful because your mind is open to yourself, not to outsiders. It is open to yourself. So um, you will have to be very vigilant of yourself. And when you don't know that, everything is getting, uh, getting uh, fermented inside. And when it starts coming out, pus is coming out, it's so bad. The entire world will start stinking. But now, you know what is going on inside. So you quietly observing that. Right. And um, uh, it is not just that the fetter, that it keeps on making commentaries, doing things, and you get involved with it and uh, goes on a long process. You observe that. And someone, someone called me this morning and she, she took about 45 minutes or one hour. And that is happening to her. And she was saying, when I'm practicing, I'm seeing my attachment to my child. I'm so much attached. Uh, but I want to go on this practice as well. And because of this attachment, I'm so scared whether my practice will be disturbed or if something happens to her and all that. I said, now you're talking. Your mind is open up for yourself. This is what the Blessed One wants to do. This is the process that is happening. When the mind is open up, things that happen. It is very difficult for us to explain in a talk. Because what is happening in the mind is happening so fast. It is, it is, giving, you, uh, it is giving you many things to put you in as much trouble as possible. Right? So she wants the part, she wants the child, she wants to have the family life and all that bundle. All these are coming up. Said, good. Now you're seeing what the mind is doing. Just keep observing. That is what the Blessed One says. And these things that are happening in the mind at such a rapid pace are the things that have the shortest life in the universe. Those thoughts won't live for eons and eons. Not even for a second. But we give so much value to them. And we become, uh, they become us and we become them. That is what Simply Blessed One is saying here. See, the feta goes on. Just observe. And you yourself will see the, what is arisen. Um, what is unarisen is arising. And what is arisen will simply pass away. And then once it passes away, it is gone forever. Something else will come up, but not that very same thing. But instead, what you do is when a very slight, a small thing has happened, you snowball it and you make that the reality. And that is why people are going to moon. That is why people are bombing the other people. The snowballing effect takes place. Blessed One says, I can show you that it is happening to you yourself. Right? You simply see that. If you see that, you don't provide the necessary ingredients to um, nourish it. Right? It won't therefore grow. It will not have fertilizer. So it will gradually die. If you become scared, if you try to avoid it, if you try to get rid of it yourself intentionally, then what happens is you are feeding. That is what it is looking for by, by, all, by bringing all these things up to frighten you. But if you take the challenge, 
if you become the real soldier now against the evil one which is your own mind then you will win the war right okay so that is uh, what the blessed one wants us to know not about the eye not about the nose not about the intellect but this is happening you just keep observing and in in my previous three talk i'm not quite sure whether i highlighted that so much i did not highlight it because i just wanted to give the uh, basic atmosphere of um, what is happening within our physical and mental process so that this thing can be explained right okay so uh, your patience uh, observation in the body the feelings and the mind and the phenomena is giving this life skill this is a life skill if you have this life skill you can do anything and you can live anywhere because you have control of yourself you don't blame the husband you don't blame the wife you don't blame the children you don't blame the weather you don't blame the god you know that this is happening in our own mind okay so um in the second thing the blessed one giving um in the lines between the lines is is quietly showing us that there is a dependent origination these things are not things that you do these are not things that someone else is doing these are not things that you and someone else together do these are not things that happening without any reason there is no creator for this but instead is gradually letting you see letting you understand letting you realize it's a dependent origination you have an eye there is form i mean because the eye meets that form the mind relating to the eye takes place and eye contact happen when the eye contact happens you label it as so beautiful i'll take it home i'll have another smile with her or him right and it goes on goes on goes on and finally you become grandfather grandfathers grandmothers we don't know what has happened it starts with that initial contact and your judgment that it is good or bad right once you, once you have decided that it is good or bad which we call feelings then that feeling leads to craving and that craving goes on goes on goes on dependent origination takes place and that is that is how we become grandfathers grandmother that is how these buildings are coming up that is how the world is having um so called development and the pollution thereby right so all these things are happening because of this dependent origination so uh, blessed one without telling us quietly takes our mind sharpens our mind for us to see ourselves right and then you know that there is no creator you are your own creator and because of dependent origination there is another thing that is happening since these are um depending on something else how strong can they be very fragile very feeble if the form if the eye is not there if the eye doesn't meet the form it nothing will happen therefore the blessed one says to venerable malukya putra suppose there is something that you have not seen that you are not seeing now that you will not see in the future will your mind be created on anything like that no right and he says um, a tree falls down 
somewhere in Himalayas. Now, doesn't it have a sound? It has a sound. Don't you have a ear? You have an ear as well. But do you hear a sound? No, because the two don't meet. Right? So therefore, um, since because that connection has to take place, they are not as strong as we think. They are so feeble. Blessed one has seen that. And then uh, gradually brings us there for us to see without our knowledge. But what happens is um, the speed of our mind doesn't allow us to see this. Things are happening so fast. Uh, as soon as you see, um, as soon as you judge, the next thing that comes to your mind is, can I smile once again? Can I see it once again? Can I touch it? Can I have it? And it keeps on, that process goes on so fast. And because of the speed, and we don't see that there is anything uh, arising dependent on something else. Right? But when you sit and try to bring your mind to the walking, I'm sorry, bring the mind to the breath, then you can see what um, what uh, devil's workshop our mind is. It is creating so many things. And when you are sitting for 45 minutes, maybe you have seen your breath only once. But not even that. Huge movie is going on. And Blessed One wants us to see that. And we are saying, okay, take as much information as possible. And you can say, no, I didn't, I didn't see anything about the breath. I've seen so many things, but I can't tell you that. If I tell you that, you will not allow me to come next time. <laughs> so, it's happening so fast. And um, the speed doesn't allow us to say this. So, when you um, see this, and unless this discussion or unless this listening is there, you definitely frighten, become afraid of what is going on. You will decide yourself that because of meditation, because of mindfulness, things are getting worse now. Right? And that is why that girl called me in the morning. Things are getting out of hand getting out of control. Now save me. I said, no, there is nothing for me to save. You are saving yourself. Just be happy that you have the ability to see it. This has been happening ever since you were born. Now you're about 35 years old. And it took 35 years for you to realize that it is happening. And you can't laugh. <laughs> And because it is happening for each and every one of us. And we become afraid. And sometimes I remember myself. When these things were happening, uh, I was not frightened. But I was worried why I became mindful. If when mindfulness was not there, everything was so smooth. Going, flowing very nicely. But after becoming mindful, Everything which I am about to do, which I might do, comes beforehand and shows this is what you are going to do next. See how ugly, how bad, how vulgar you are. Right? So you become frightened. So just imagine if you don't have a forum like this. And if there is no one to talk about. then uh, the, the doctor's practices will be flourishing. They will be selling pills after pills after pill. And uh, they will have a very nice business. And they will, op they will be opening uh, the practices 24-7. Because so many queues are there. And that is exactly happening. That is what is happening now. Because people are having everything with the touch of a button. 
they don't have any challenges. Since they don't have any challenges, and their mind is um, mind is creating havoc, and they can't understand what's going on. So as soon as they go and see a doctor and tell that this is what is happening, they straight away label it as okay, something is wrong, and take this pill. Right. Um, so. Because now we, we are very fortunate that we have someone to listen to and we have someone to ask from. And as a result, uh, we can uh, practice quietly. And the Blessed One has told Venerable Ananda that having a noble friend when you practice is imperative. Venerable Ananda has said 50% of the practice is with the noble friend. The Blessed One has said, don't say that, Ananda. Don't say that, Ananda. He has said that twice, not once. Said 100% it is with the noble friend because the practitioner does not know what is happening. So there should have someone always going before him so that he can rely on and then keep on practicing. Right? And um, so seeing when you are ready, seeing the dependent origination, uh, where, uh, if your practice gets cleared and if you report and if you have sufficient listening uh, supportive factor, when this, when you see the dependent origination, when you see the speed, it becomes a laughing matter, not, a some, not something to frighten about. You can start laughing at your own mind because mind is never afraid. Mind is never, um, what do you call, um, not ashamed of anything that is happening. It will be creating all these things, um, uh, unashamed thing. And when you see them, you can just sit and walk and laugh at yourself. Right. So there is another point coming from. Uh, dependent origination, the Blessed One is making us practice or making us see as it is, is the impermanence. If things are arising dependent on something else before that, as we think, they don't last forever. It lasts not even a fraction of a second. So that is, they are so imp impermanent. So that impermanence is also something that Blessed One is quietly teaching us in those few lines. He discerns the eye, he discerns the form, he discerns the feta, he discerns the unarisen feta arises, the reason feta abundant, then once it is gone, it is gone forever. You keep observing, which means you keep observing the impermanence of things. Nothing stays as it is. Once you see something, it will not be there forever. It, it takes some, something else takes its place. And then finally, what you have seen has gone miles and miles. But in your head, it is still there. It is much bigger in your head than actually saw. It. <laughs> and one day, sorry, one day... Uh, I had this um, game of listening to the gong and I asked the kids to listen, close their eyes and listen. And they were listening um, quietly and I asked them to keep listening even after the gong sound is over. And one was saying, uh, once I asked them to speak, wow, sound was not there, but my mind was bong, bong, bong. So that, that uh, image of the sound stays in us. So like that, most of the things, a lot of wows are going in our head, we don't know. Right? So what we have seen, what we have heard, what we have tasted, what we have touched, what we have thought, it's gone in a fraction, fraction of a second. But we carry on the image, we carry on the burden. So um, we think... When you see something, when something happens that is permanent, but um, if you are patient enough, everything passes away 
and we can't simply see it and we don't wait to see it because we we get panic and just jump on to the next one we just uh, lose the opportunity to observe blessed one has created that window for us take a step back don't react let whatever is happening happen you observe so this is how we say just walk and observe what is happening and what you feel in the feel if you don't feel anything doesn't matter know that you don't feel it when you observe your breath you observe your breath and if you don't feel your breath tell that you don't feel the breath that is an observation in itself and instead um you don't feel the breath but you have so many thoughts say that and give the details of the thoughts so um you 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 don't become panic uh, or you don't look for breath um you take that opportunity to sharpen your mind and observe and that makes you feel that the um things are not lasting forever things keep changing so something uh bhante dhamma ji was said when he came in 2006 when i met him for the first time is um you uh, draw the vine um the way the plant is growing right you know we we uh, we usually when we uh, grow long bean or something or snake bean or something snake god or something what we do is we will have to um, have a, a small frame for the wine to go right so what he says is um let the wine come up and then you prepare your frame according to where the wine is going don't prepare the frame and get the wine there right so that is what you will have to do you let the mind play whatever the mind wants to play you just keep on and keep observing like a third umpire or like the detective go behind the thief go behind the thief right so um when you do that you will see um, everything is not lasting as soon as you see it passes away and the sheer speed of uh, the engagement of the faculties give the false impressions of permanence because it's happening so fast we think i have seen it myself can i show you a photo can i show you the video and we have proofs as well and they are accepting court of law law as well but what we have accepted is things that have become impermanent and becoming impermanent right so in, we make impermanent things permanent and have built our world on it well and then we say we have so much of pollution we have so much of mental disorders we have so much of these diseases that diseases is true because we have built everything on a very fragile very feeble structure so can you expect any permanence only permanent thing is the impermanence if you accept that very easy to live but we try to make the impermanent permanent and like dog trying to bite the tail we keep on going round and round round and round round and round never happens so um, not only that the blessed one is uh, also in this few lines he is trying to teach us another message giving us another message that is non self because of dependent origination as we discussed a little while ago there is no one doing it there is no one doing it it is happening because the conditions are met but is there any any point in time that we have accepted that there is no self we immediately identify ourselves with it that is why we take a photograph that is why we take a video right because we give some value to what we see so when we give value to what we see 
you create yourself you are your own creator but the blessed one lets you see these stages thin slice the time thin slice the space and then you start seeing mm, there is nothing here to see there is nothing here to taste as me myself or mine and then when you keep on observing and it may come to a point that you yourself feel yourself see you yourself experience that all these things are falling apart like a lego structure like a like a uh, like a firework that there is nothing solid as such when you think keep on thin slicing these things you you can experience that they are falling you will see that there is no self it is not something just for intellectual entertainment this is something that you can experience yourself so again because of uh, the speed of our um impatience we identify ourselves with everything and we give value the value to things that are important and happens due to a cause are uh, rather um, impermanent and happens due to a cause so in practice you experience this while observing your breath that is why uh, um you see your breath is becoming subtler that is why when you walk you feel you are walking but you can't control your walk, walk. you are walking and it's happening you are walking like a puppet walking is happening but when you are walking somewhere else when you go to the car when you get down from the car when you walk there is no problem but when you try to come and walk here when you lift the leg and the leg is not getting placed where you want to place it it goes somewhere else that is because gradually the self is um, fading away moving away and um, at the beginning things are gross but when you keep on observing over time it gets subtler and uh, you don't uh, when they become subtler and if you don't try to make them gross again you allow the non self to take its course and then uh, you don't Id- identify yourself with it and you let um the nature which is the dependent origination play its role so when it is playing its role um and when you master you may go to a stage where you feel body also gets subtle when your breath becomes subtler your body you may not feel your body as well right there are a lot of instances when people are providing their experiences they say i don't feel my body while walking i don't feel my body because um it is also becoming subtle right you, you don't identify yourself with your body and when you don't identify yourself with your body you don't feel right so therefore these are not imaginary these are things the practitioners can experience and talk about so uh, all <laughs> this is because your mind now is an observer instead of taking or creating me creating my creating mine and the dependent origination impermanence and non self are some of the absolute truths whether we like it or not they are there but we always work to go go against them we always say me i we our and we have given values and we have created them we don't accept non self but we accept self we don't accept impermanence we accept permanence we don't accept dependent origination we say no i did that my father did it and we all did this 
and so the we create the creator as well. We don't think that these are dependent or generic. So simply, what we do is in our living is going against the absolute truth, right? So that does not mean when you see the absolute truth, sleep without eating, or just let anything happen, or I just chill out. No. You will have to live in this world knowing that there is absolute truth and you do things for their utility value only. That's what my teacher says. Right? You have an eye. And for eye to be healthy, you should see things, but you should not get hooked onto them. You should do everything for your survival. Right? But not to make yourself um, or, or uh, go beyond uh, the utility value. Today, what we see is not the utility value, just mere commercialization. Each and everything is commercialized. And my teacher says, every time the, the um, blood sugar level, um, the, the, the level at which you are considered as an person with blood sugar, what do you call it? Diabetes, Diabetes um, is coming down. Why it is coming down? Because uh, you try to protect yourself so they can sell products. So they create the market. Right? So uh, therefore we go against dependent origination, non-self and we go against the absolute truth. And uh, um, so hope this talk has given you uh, what actually the Blessed One is trying to teach uh, in the observation of this ear faculty, eye faculty, nose faculty, tongue faculty, body faculty, and the intellect faculty, um, and the corresponding uh, corresponding external object and their continue, continuing um, mental involvement. Uh, so um, with that, hope you will have the faith and energy, mindfulness, concentration, and wisdom to understand the dependent origination in our life and then impermanence when things are happening and their non-self nature and may you all be happy, well, and peaceful. May the blessings of Triple Gem be with all of you. Okay, that's the conclusion of Sixth Sense Basis section in the Phenomena section of Four Foundations of Mindfulness. Next session, we are going to embark on a very important section, which is the development of spiritual faculties. So um, um, now if you have any question, any comment, we can take this time to discuss. And apologies, when I played uh, the sitting guidance, I couldn't share the sound. So, so those who are in Zoom could not hear. And I realized that halfway through my sitting practice, <laughs> that I did not share the sound. So I'm so mindful. Okay. So any points to talk, discuss? Any reports? I uh, I think uh, I um I want to uh, share one of my experience in the past uh, because uh, with, uh, when I s start to see this uh, process with uh, the form and uh, this entanglement and also like a thought process, uh, I start fighting with it 
and uh, then uh, actually I almost become sick and uh, uh, I was so tired and uh, I knew that this is happening to me and uh, one of the thing is uh, when I try to suppress because I want to focus on something else, especially work and this uh, dependent origination or like uh, it's like a thought process I I treat it as uh, uh, some obstacle uh, and uh, then uh, I try to keep it away from it by stopping purposefully but uh, then I have to come to Bhante and uh, get some advice and one of the advice is like uh, observe you don't try to stop it and one of the thing uh, is like when you're trying to forcefully stop it, I never experienced this impermanence, impermanence, uh, because it's, I think it's like, it's a fixed thing and it, you can't change or something. But when you try to observe it, I realized that actually these thoughts are not permanent, like these are dying and it's like, it just uh, goes up and down. That's not a problem now, but the thing is, um, when uh, I know that the these thoughts are there always uh, now much better and I'm not fighting with it and then my physical body also respond with uh, less strain and lot less fluid in the system and therefore less pain and things like that but the thing is I always uh, my mind saying okay you're observing this continuously then what like you 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 are like a servant to your mind or you just you you want to go on like that and not what's what's staying like you know it just because you you have to be productive and you have to make something like you have to make your living and that sort of thing any advice on that would be great yeah yeah no good that you brought it up um, that is why I said at the beginning, you can't laugh <laughs> when I was explaining it. Um, no, our mind never gives up. When you keep on observing and if, if, if the initial entanglement or initial difficulty, initial mental agony it, has, it is creating, um, if you keep on observing that, then mind knows, okay, uh, I can't have my house here. I can't have my shelter here. I should create another shelter. So then he's asking another question. So um, when are you going to end this? Are you sure that this is going to work? Right? So he will, this is why I said mind is something which has no shame at all. It will try its level best to create suffering to us or put us down, undermine ourselves and then take the upper hand. And when those things are happening, that is the next layer. When you said, now it is okay, now uh, it is not happening. I wanted to say, don't say that. That is also said by the mind. Mind is trying to make you overestimate what is happening so that it can take the upper hand. You always, not that you undermine yourself, you always say, no, I have got to work more. I have got to be more vigilant. Right? So as soon as you overestimate, you give uh, an opportunity to the mind. So then it, uh, you relax and mind will take. And then it is going to be, it is going, to, uh, a huge stock of stink is going to come. Right? So to always keep it, uh, Underestimated, and you be at guard. You, you become watchful of the mind. Then these things that are com coming up, you can be mindful of that as well. One day uh, when I was uh, practicing and my practice was, uh, I was very mindful. And all of a sudden from nowhere, something that I cannot tell in the audience popped up. I straight away laughed. Uh, a laugh immediately came because 
uh, I knew now the mind is trying to create something and to take my mind away. So if you if you become mindful of continuous um, thinking process the mind is making, you get an opportunity to laugh at yourself or laugh at your own mind. You can see how how um, what you call helpless the mind becomes. Right? When you observe, since you don't create, uh, since you don't react. It loses its stronghold, right? So uh, even even when you get those thoughts, it's the Buddha is having just one medication. What is that? What is that one medication that the Buddha is having? Yeah, not just awareness. Keep the awareness to the full. Always keep the mindfulness in the driving seat. It will take care of anything. Your, our body will do things. Our mind will do things. Uh, interactions between the two will, things will happen. If the, if the mindfulness is in the driving seat, he will be aware of each and everything. No reaction. So then and there, since there is no reaction, then and there that mind will lose its strength. That mind will not take the stronghold in those uh, places. Right. Anything else? Anybody else? Sorry. Um, I forgot his name. What's his name? His name? Arthur. Arthur must be having a question. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes, I do actually. Yeah, yeah. Because your questions are good questions, and everyone else is having, they don't ask. <laughs> um, when when it is uh, daylight outside, um, we 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 can't see the stars. So when night falls and the sun goes away, the stars are there. They've always been there, even though we couldn't see it. So I was wondering in, in life, our mind is filled with information coming in through the senses, through words that we've learned while we've been born. So our mind is taken up by information from our senses by words. But when we die, do the stars come out? As in, do we become enlightened? Do we see all reality? Do we see what was always there, but we could not because of our senses? So let me... Let me see whether I understood the question. What you are saying is um, whether we will be in, um, enlightened after death. That's a simple question because it is there anyway. Um, Blessed One said, "This is this is the difference between uh, his teaching and all other teachings." In all other teachings, to uh, experience what they teach, you should die. Okay? But the Blessed One says, uh, when we are worshipping, we are saying uh, something like this. Uh, what we say is, to be seen here and now, not delayed in time. Okay? And inviting one to come and see onward day. Yeah. So it, it's, there is no need for you to wait till the death. If you are mindful now, you can see that. What you can see is, um, uh, say for example, your mind is cluttered with so much of information 
um, with which um, uh, you are entangled in, uh, you can start seeing that when you try to bring your attention to the breath or when you try to bring your attention to the walk. Right? But uh, unless you do that, you don't know it is there. It is there, but you don't know. Right? So that experience, I'm taking a very simple uh, example. Right? Um, so there is no need therefore to wait till you die to experience that. And if I go another step uh, forward, and if you, uh, when you go to bed, and if you don't practice, right, when you go to bed, and you never wake up in the following morning, saying, I have done everything and nothing more to do. Or when you go to bed, you go to bed, completing everything that you're supposed to. And when you wake up in the morning, there is nothing. Do we have any day like that? Always when we wake up, we have a to-do list. Right? If nothing else is there, I, I have to, um, I will have to go on a hike today. Or I will have to um, go on a bicycle tour. Or I'll have to go on a holiday. Right? Some to-do thing will be there. We, we will not sleep after completing everything. Right? So therefore, when you die, you will carry a baggage to be completed. So you, you don't uh, provide an opportunity to enlighten. But now, when you are living, if you start observing things, what you simply do is, you stop doing. You are training that there, are, there is nothing else for me to do. I'm just living. I'm just walking. I'm just observing my walking. Nothing else for me to do. And I'm just living. I'm sitting and I am observing my life, which is breath. Nothing else for me to do. So when you observe your breath and nothing else to do, when that breath goes, finish. Because you have finished your work. And that is the training we are doing. Right? So it is, we are 100% correct. Enlightenment is there. But it has been cluttered. It has been um, um, contaminated with so much of information, so much of defilements, so much of greed, hatred, and delusion. Right? So, uh, therefore, enlightenment is far, far away. One day I went to see uh, uh, not a dentist, a dental surgeon, a very someone who is working in River City. Um, and um, I had a book because we let to wait for some time and I took a book. It was a spiritual book and it had a very catching title. And he's, he saw the book and said, this is a very long path. The professor of some 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 professor. I said, even the longest path, you'll have to start start with the first step. Discussion stopped. We are postponing it so much. Spirituality is so far away. Oh, this is not something that can be done. Unless you take the first step now, when are we going to do it? So if you take one step today. You're one step closer to the final destination, um, going Kaji says. Take your first step now. Don't leave it for tomorrow or in the next minute. Right? So you're one step closer. It's a long journey. But when you start, you yourself will realize it is not that long. It has, it has been with us all the time and we have been just delaying. Buddha very clearly says if you practice full time and if you are very clever enough, Within seven days, results will come. Within seven days, results will come. And he, he has said, if you are not clever enough, if you are dumb like me, and do it on a part-time basis, in seven years, you will have results. It is happening. Nobody can stop. And there are so many practitioners uh, joining me in other programs. And I tell them, 
when they provide their reports, I feel jealous about them <laughs> because um, there is someone to talk, there is someone to teach, and there is someone to guide them, and they get results so quickly. When I was practicing, uh, before I met Pante Dhammajeeva, I had been practicing about seven, eight years. Results were there, and I was not aware what was happening to me. And when I met him, and uh, he said, this is what mindfulness is, and then everything fall in line. Everything fall in line. Now I don't tell anything. He, to anyone who is doing anything else, I tell them, stop that and be mindful. And it is very difficult for people to tell that. And those who are going on around the Bodhi tree here, when I tell them, stop that, it's a waste of time. You just can't use that time and do this. They have 101 reasons to say that it is um, it should be done. And um, I don't discourage them much as well because at least they are coming to the temple. And the other reason is I also started with that. So therefore, it becomes a reason for, the, for them to come to the temple, but we should not stay there. We should not stop there. Right? There is, there is Buddha's teaching is different. Okay, uh, I think I went out of the topic. <laughs> um, Bante, I have a question. Uh, it's not a, more of a question, it's a concern as well. Um, from the morning I wake up, up until I come here. So this is my fourth time coming and joining your session. Um, I'm like a machine, like everybody else. And, um, and then when I come and when we first start to meditate by walking, it's really hard for me to concentrate and be mindful. Um, in your first, in my first session, I didn't know what I did. I basically walked, I think. And um, when I sat down, I realized that I could, I could concentrate more. I could look at what's happening to my body and all the aches and pains I could feel. Um, and this is the fourth time and it's still the same. So I don't know whether I feel the walking meditation is uh, for me, it's, I don't, I, I keep thinking other things and I keep planning and my mind goes on and on and on. Um, is that because of, do I have to, before I come here, relax a bit so I might see a little bit of a difference or I'm a bit concerned on that one? From the perspective of mindfulness, we will have to say this. From the perspective of mindfulness, now you very clearly are aware of what's happening. So that's mindfulness. You try to um, bring your attention to the um, walking process or to the sole of the feet. You can't do. But so many thoughts are going on. You're aware of it. And um, on the other hand, when you sit, you can bring your attention to the body and you can feel the body, right? And how can you tell this? Unless you are mindful, right? So um, the mindfulness is happening in both, right? The mindfulness that you have generated while walking is uh, bearing fruit while sitting. Now what you will have to learn is Appreciate the fact that you are aware of what is happening. When the thoughts are there, when no need to uh, try and stop thoughts, right? Just be aware that thoughts are there and be happy about your awareness. Because now the mind is trying gradually to create some difficulty to you, to tell you that you are not doing well. Right? Because the main job of 
the mind is to create suffering that is why the blessed one says first noble truth is truth of suffering because that is what the mind is doing mind did that even to the buddha after enlightenment um, some thoughts have come kings are doing this this these things so it's so bad so it's, it's if that is happening to buddha just imagine yourself right so it cannot be compared so only thing what we will have to do is um we will have to be happy that we are aware so if 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 we give that um valuation or value to our awareness we never value awareness we value doing things now here we we will have to value not doing things right there is one more thing in the mind why the mind is creating this uh, this is because mind is trying to have a target mind is trying to have an objective to achieve right which is bringing your attention to the leg i'm walking i should have only all the information of the of my walking process unless you have that you are a failure and that is why you compare the two in that manner your attention is not there with the leg so you are failure in the walking and but you are a success here right so now what we will have to do is whether failure or success i am aware so then you don't uh, you don't create yourself with either of these so it's it's a very tricky game so it's it's uh, thank you for talking that, that talking is uh, essential to get the path clear otherwise you'll practice uh, i can't help unless you spell out mm. um, thought, i'm not this this is going to take such a long time um and 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 i was talking with gihana as well and he was telling me like almost exactly the same things that you told me you now so um and he said just go and then keep doing it <laughs> yeah so i think yeah now i feel cuz this is what i have been feeling the last couple of times so now i feel much better when you say that i can like doing it and just keep doing it yeah. that is why the blessed one says this this discussion is imperative unless this discussion is happening we we become victims of the mind and this is an answer for arthur's question when you practice you have the results straight away this this is this is the enlightenment knowing that this is my baggage all right anything else it's a comment um it's actually a comment for Aki I used to come here in the mornings before I go to work and do some meditation and when I used to come here um when I walked it was just continuous thoughts and I never had to do any pre-planning for the rest of the day because my whole day was planned during that walking time so you're not alone um when when you start uh, becoming mindful and when you appreciate your mindfulness uh, thoughts will not stop and it will give more and more creative so you become very creative you become very efficient It, it tries to hook you there. When I was working, I didn't know. Uh, for two and a half years, they had given me work that I cannot handle alone. And I just go and sit, bang, 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 finish. And five minutes before everybody else, I get up and come. And um, after two and a half years, they said, well done. Thank you very much. 
uh, we had given you more work that you uh, can't can handle. That huh? Was it that? I didn't know. I didn't know. But we are your when you are not struggling with things, your efficiency naturally increases. But we should not do mindfulness to increase your efficiency. That's a byproduct. Okay. So let me assume that there is no more comment and uh, we can with this practice and the discussion. Um, we have generated so much of positive energies. We can share these positive energies with the other living beings in the universe. To do that, we can, we can chant uh, the um, traditional stanzas, transferring those energies to all the divine beings and all other beings and the organizers of this, these things and ourselves and anyone who is looking after us and our departed relatives, not only in this life, even in our previous life, with uh, lives rather. With that in mind, we can chant the traditional stanzas. <clears throat> 